It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Dr. Amanda Wilson, a native of San Francisco, obtained her dental education from UCSF Dental School and her master's of dental science and orthodontic certification at the University of Connecticut. I always say Connecticut, but I can only spell it in grammar school if I wrote out connect, I cut. So I still pronounce it University of Connect, I cut. She practiced clinical 10 years in the San Francisco Bay Area, and during that time completed thousands of orthodontic cases, both fixed and removal. Following her calling to teach and mentor, she eventually transitioned into corporate dentistry and has worked the last six years as a dental director and consultant to both national and international orthodontic companies and DSOs. In 2016, recognizing the lack of orthodontic coaching services, that catered directly to general dentists, she became passionate about filling the space and founded her own orthodontic management and coaching company, Straight Smile Solutions. Straight Smile Solutions offers both virtual and direct coaching to general dentists and their teams through a HIPAA compliant communication platform designed to deliver convenience and excellent orthodontic outcomes to clients. She hopes to make a positive change in the dental industry. Um, I called her, she did not call me, uh, and uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Sure, thanks for the great introduction. I, I look at the nine specialties of dentistry recognized by the ADA when I got out in 87, 31 years ago. And, you know, most of the specialties don't have a lot of turned upside down things. I mean, what what are the pediatric yeah. dentists about? The only thing they are arguing over is, is uh, silver diamine fluoride. Uh, you look at endo. I mean, how much could you argue about one file system versus another file system? But man, you're an orthodontist. And if there was one specialty that's been turned completely upside down with a direct to consumer aligner movement, I mean, you got Invisalign opening up their own stores. You got Smiles Direct Club, Candid, Smile Lee, uh, Smile Love, Ortholy. What is it? Where are you? How do you see that? I mean, you're looking at this from 30,000 feet up in the air. How, how do you see this? Uh, um, this direct to consumer aligner movement? For sure, that's a great question. And it's kind of a loaded question because no matter how I answer it, I'm gonna get a couple hate emails. So um, yeah, I'm kind of at the center of it. I did help to initially launch Smile Direct Club. I was their first dental director. Um, love me or hate me for that. But you know what? It was gonna happen anyways. Anytime there's something that is just so easy and possibly productive, the venture capitalists are gonna find it. And you know what? We were all doing this anyways. Every single orthodontist was already doing that in their office. I don't know about even if you were doing it, but we know we'd have these patients and they'd go off to college and, and they'd say, hey, can you just mail me my aligners? And I'll just take a couple of um, texts and I'll check in with you. And you know what? Gosh darn it, the cases worked fine. So if you get a great treatment plan that works for that kind of movement, and if you have a great patient and you combine it together, it's totally doable. And you know, it caught on with the venture capitalists, it caught on throughout globally, and dentists are now doing it too within their own offices and finding ways to use teledentistry to um, kind of streamline their practice. And you know, I think it's great for consumer access to care too. Well, so when you were their first dental director, was that back when they were in Michigan or after they had moved to uh, Nashville, Tennessee? Um, all of the above. So yeah, I started with them in 2014. So you were 2014 in Michigan and then moved to Nashville, Tennessee? Um, I got to work remotely. I was really blessed, but oh. um, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Man, because those are great. I love yeah. Nashville, Tennessee. I mean, that that uh, yeah. that uh, Second Avenue Street is amazing. I couldn't complain. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So um, so let's start with um, so the the movement. Um, or do you agree with these numbers? I hear. I I, I read macroeconomic data that says only five percent of Americans get orthodontics. Is that what you hear? I mean, there's 325 um, million people. Only five percent. No. I mean, I mean, maybe if you include every single American, including right. um, everyone up to age 95, for, that's possible, but it's changing. I mean, the average, you know, under 18, I'd say more, the majority is having some type of orthodontics, whether it be aligners or braces. And now, I mean, there's just so much low hanging fruit out there. I tell my dentist, look, you don't even have to compete with any of this direct consumer aligner. There's low hanging fruit everywhere you look because if you focus on what the patient actually wants, and that's really how these direct consumer companies are flourishing because they're listening to the patient. What do you want to fix? Not do what, what do I want you to fix? We don't have to fix bites. We can just, you know, close that little gap or straighten those bottom teeth. Sure. Yes. We'll do that for you. Well, they, they just want wider, brighter, sexier teeth. I mean, I mean, look at Americans, a third is. of them are almost as fat as I am. 
And uh, my gosh, uh, come on, um, no, <laughs> ser- awesome. Ser- seriously, um, they, they they obviously don't have a problem chewing. I mean, I had I had uncles when I got out of school. I had uncles. This was thirty years ago. Their past that had zero teeth and could eat anything there is. And sure. and as far as I, you know, I used to remember seeing uh, cases when I got out of school where they thought I was going to pull four bicuspids because it was the only way they could treat the midline. And then I said to yeah. the then I said to the orthodontist whose wife was sitting at the reception deal right up the me, I said, okay, well, your wife, where's her midline? And he didn't know. And I said, you're going to pull four <laughs> bicuspids to fix a midline when you don't even know where your own wife's midline, but you guys reproduce and have offspring. I mean, her midline was close enough to pop out a few kids. Um, so, so, <laughs> so you're saying a lot of them don't want, don't have problems chewing bites, midlines. They just want Not them straighter. All. But holy cow, you just touched on a whole nother subject, which is the subject of four by extraction cases. That's a whole nother huge subject. So many general dentists are getting frustrated with their orthodontists who are pulling out teeth on their patients. And now there's starting to be some researches coming out about airway and the interaction between having four bicuspids pulled. So, I mean, you touched a whole nother huge hot button subject in ortho. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and it's moderation from A to Z. I mean, when I got out of school, I mean, there were there were orthodontists who three out of four cases said by cusp finish And now it seems like 30 years sure. later, those guys that were doing that are down to about one in four. Uh, I know right. there's some extremists who say it should never be done ever. And I don't think on a planet with seven and a half billion people, you could ever mm-hmm. say never. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. so, so, um, so. Invisalign used to own part of Smiles Drug Club. I think they bought like 19% and then I guess that's been divested or whatever. But um, if you were talking to a Wall Street analyst, would you say these guys got some uh, good business models? Invisalign opening up their own store? I think everyone in in that direction, I don't think you can go wrong with any of these business models. Because like I said, there's just tons of low hanging fruit. It doesn't matter whether you're focusing on removables, patient centered ortho, just, you know, anterior alignment, or if you're focusing on you know, airway, you're focusing on like what Invisalign is now, they're really focusing on little kids. They're focusing on phase one. That's a whole nother group of low hanging fruit that the direct consumer aligner companies are not touching at all yet. I mean, maybe it's just too um, too risky, but Invisalign sure as heck is. So, um, you know, they're treating kids as young as five now with aligners. And you know, my daughter, she's nine, she's in aligners um, and you know, clear cracks, I'm using, her, using them for her system, but it's fantastic for phase one. And that's, you know, if you're not looking at phase one in your patients, you really should be. So that, that that's, has that, um, you know, it's funny because 31 years ago, there was a turf. I remember a lot of the orthodontists didn't like a couple of the really successful pediatric dentists because they were doing phase one. And now mm-hmm. 31 years later, I can't tell you how many business models I see where a pediatric dentist is practicing with an orthodontist. Yep. It's a great pair right there for sure. And I, and I help, um, a lot of times I come into offices and I help these two get along, you know, figuring out where the line is, um, who gets what, you know, whose territory is whose, but really there's just so much blending of the territory that, you know, anyone can do this. It's not rocket science. It really isn't. Ortho really, I think is one of, one of the easiest specialties. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's really challenging stuff in ortho, but it's just a really small piece of that pie. And a good 70 to 80 percent of it can be done by any specialty. Well, man, you, uh, um, oh my God, I can't wait to get the hate mail on this one. Out of the nine specialties, orthodontics is the easiest one. But in the, in the, to be fair, I mean, they, they're not giving shots. They don't use scalpels. They're not sutures. They don't have dry sockets. They're not putting people to sleep. They don't have to deal with anesthesia. Yeah, I would, I, I would imagine if I was going to slow down, I would want to do white fillings, bleaching, bonding and uh ortho not bone yeah. grafts and sinus lifts and lug wigs and failing root canals <laughs> what did you say <laughs> you know i mean i mean i mean there is there, i mean the blood and guts you know and i've always thought there were totally i always right. thought you could split the dentist in half half of them like me just love blood and guts and the other half didn't really care for that and like to do more uh pretty stuff bleaching bonding veneers um yeah. you know orthodontics things like that but i mean um so I, I, I got to be straight with you. This is Dentistry Uncensored. So, Dr. Amanda Wilson, my, my first question to you is, um, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. I got two dental schools in my backyard. I got one AT Stella Mesa, one in, in Midwestern. They, they cost $100,000 a year. These kids come out $400,000 in debt. And guess how many ortho cases they've done? Zero? Zero! 
<laughs> yes, I, I, I did I did 15 canals of endo when I was at UMKC wow. and I talked to a guy the other day that did one root canal on an extracted tooth but he got to assist some root canals and I'm like you didn't you, you paid him 400 grand and you didn't do a root canal. So, so uh, Amanda, most of the kids listening to this are young. Uh, 25% of everybody that emails me, Howard at Dentaltown.com or leaves a, a comment in the YouTube section. They're still in dental school a quarter. The rest are all under 30. They're kids. So she's, she's driving to work right now and she said, Amanda, uh, I paid $400,000. I, I don't even know how to do an Invisalign case. I don't know what a clear liner. How would she start? How would she start her journey if she wants to be like you when she grows up? Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know, there's so many different ways to do it. And I do think Invisalign is an amazing product. I think if you're going to do it, you need to be all in um, because their lab fees are very high. And it's getting hard now to charge that $5,000 a case in order to be able to meet your overhead of it's basically what, eighteen twenty five plus retention fees. So, I mean, that's a really slim margin that you're making on those cases. And even now that they're launching their Invisalign franchises, Invisalign stores, they're fixing those prices at $24.99 to $34.99 for the doctors that opt into that. That's a really slim margin. So you have to get smart and you're going to have to do volume basically, or you're going to have to get creative and think about ways to use off-label, different label um, aligner systems. And there's no less than probably 20 to 30 um, in the US alone, this is not direct to consumer. This is ones that work with doctors to white label your aligner systems. I like to call it, quote, your own brand aligners, but you can white label it. If you do it in your own office and you're not reselling it to any other office, you do not need a 510. Um, you do not need a QMS. And if you don't know what these are, these are just different types of um, FDA approvals that you need. If you're only doing it to your own existing patients, you can do this today if you want to. And in theory, you can turn around these aligners in less than a day. In the morning, they can come in and scan. In the afternoon, you can go ahead and give them out. So it's pretty amazing. Aligners in a day. So, you know, um, Invisalign is owned by Align Technology, and they also um, own the uh, iTero eye scanner. And then mm -hmm. they had some legal issues with um, the uh, guys out of um, um, Three Shape. Three Shape, um, Three Denmark. Shape out yeah. of uh, Denmark. Uh, Copenhagen, which I had the honor of visiting. That's a lovely place. But They're amazing. in going into the scanners, are you preferring an open source scanner or use a For closed sure. source scanner? Talk, talk about what scanners. Which one do you recommend? For sure. Open source? 100% open source. Listen, I'm, a, I'm not directly affiliated with any scanning company or any 3D printing company or anything. I like to go and play with everything, touch everything, try everything. And I realize that they're always um, upgrading software and everyone's getting newer and sleeker and faster but right now i'm still a huge fan of three shape i think their team is really nice i always like to root for the underdog because they did kind of get slapped in the face by a line and um but they're truly awesome team you know and their scanner if you're a general dentist i still have to strongly suggest that you get that scanner because it is by far the best if you're going to do implants crowns bridges um, surgical guides, anything else that you want to use it for. I mean, you can completely create an impressionless practice and you can, you know, just spin those, those, um, those, what do you call it? Mailing times. The turnaround times is going to be so fast on your cases. So yeah, I mean, I, I would go three shape at this so moment. Three Forget shape, the, three and there's ways to get around the Invisalign's little rules on them. So if you want to know ways to get around it, let me know. So, so three shape is open source. I, I actually believe there's some kids that says I don't even know the difference in open source and closed source, but like, right. like what, what practice management software do you use? I'm fully um, a consultant right now. So, I mean, before I've worked with doctors that are using Dentrix, they're using open dental, all the sorts and of open different dental. ortho ones, but yeah, I, I was, I was on dental. soft dent for 30 years and switched to open dental just because every time I podcast some high tech guy, they say, well, open dental is open. I can program seamlessly yeah. straight into the system. And uh, they're just, everybody is working with open dental. So just fabulous see, team. And yeah, so, so open team. source, because if it's not open source, then you have to buy everything from, can you give an example of a closed system scanner? Closed system scanner. Well, I mean, obviously Invisalign, the iTero is a closed system scanner. Right. And I believe some of the other ones, maybe by, um, Sarek, I guess would be a closed system Dense scanner. Dentsply Serona. Yeah. 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 So. There's quite a few. So yeah, most of my doctors are using three shape care stream and some use iTero, but yeah. 
Yeah. For sure. um, and talk, talk about your website where I found you. Um, my homies were telling me, um, a bunch of people told me to get a hold of you. Your website is straightsmilesolution.com. What are you actually yeah, doing? Perfect. So um, I do pretty much anything you want me to do if it's in the world of ortho. So most of my workflow is coming into um, dentist offices. Some of them are orthodontists, some of them are general dentists, some are pedi pediatric dentists, and we connect and we just help basically look for opportunities. Um, it could be opportunities in airway. It could be opportunities um, in phase one. It could be opportunities for aligners, Invisalign, generic aligners, um, clear correct. No, I have no particular you know, affiliation with any product out there. I'll use whatever you want to use, or I can suggest whatever be the lowest cost um, lab solution for that case. And we just look through their cases and support them to make sure they have awesome outcomes. A lot of people have cases in progress. They could be Invisalign, they could be clear correct, and they're stuck. You know, they're really, really stuck. And I realize Invisalign has their um, assist tool where they will connect you with a doctor, but most of those you're paying per case and the turnaround time is kind of slow. So, um, it's great to have just be, um, you know, connected to an orthodontist and get that turnaround time, you know, less than a day, less than 24 hours on all your cases, getting feedback, helping you out of some pickles that you might be in with some existing cases. Even it can be, it can be braces. It doesn't really matter. Um, I help with anything. So, um, so you said at the beginning of the show that, you know, that, you know, that we were doing, um, uh, mail order ortho back in the day when someone kid went away to college you need to mail them in a liner you said you know if you got a great treatment plan and a great patient there was no problem but you know um the great treatment plan they they keep so much ortho education out of the dental schools i mean it's really weird and it's really weird with especially is when you're talking to a dental student because if any dental student goes to an endodontist and says, well, you help me with this molar root canal, they, they try to tell you everything they know. If you can't pull out a tooth, right. the oral surgeon tries to show you everything they know. And then you go to an orthodontist and at least half the orthodontists say, well, if you want to learn orthodontist, you need to go to orthodontic school. It's really a closed, I mean, do you agree with that? Or it is still. Did, did I, I pull mean, out I of thin air or is that true? Yeah, that, you know, a lot of orthodontists, so I've actually partnered with a lot of orthodontists because the general dentists I work with end up it's so funny, like people automatically see what at my workflow and they go, oh, she hates orthodontists. Oh, she's taking business away. She's ruining our profession. That's not the truth at all. I love, love my colleagues. And as a matter of fact, the general dentist and pediatric dentist that I work with, they refer even more cases than they were ever doing because they're looking at every single case. You know, they're, they're laser focused. Is this an ortho case now? Is this an ortho case later? Let me put it in a bucket. You know, maybe it'll be in two years. They literally are handing these cases out to the orthodontist right and left, you know, the more challenging cases, because they're seeing those impacted canines early before you have to pull teeth, you know? They're seeing that growth issues that are happening early and they're realizing, ooh, yikes, this has a class three tendency. I don't want to touch this. I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to the orthodontist. But, you know, no, for sure. I mean, that's, that's not the case at all. We can give you so many more cases. We just need to educate our general dentist as to what cases maybe they want to try some easy ones but they'll give the rest to you just work with them but where where would you recommend she's listening now she's driving to work she's an associate somewhere and where would she what would be the fastest easiest way to learn orthodontics i mean would it be online is it a seminar where do where do you what do you, what do you say to the person who says look man i graduated from dental school and and they, they i mean a lot of these schools are so bizarre For sure. that their whole ortho education is like craniofacial growth and development and these right. weird diseases They're and all that. They're trying to scare you off. Yeah, They're trying and, to have you not do it. And so, four, I mean, four years later, it's like, well, can I just do an Invisalign case? You know, I learned all this craniofacial development stuff for 400 grand. How am I going to pay? So, so wh where would you recommend she start? Walk her up that well, stairway. Absolutely. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going to say that my program is the best in the world. I really believe in, you know, learning by doing. So my doctors, we go ahead, we start looking at some of your cases. We'll jump into your open dental. We'll jump into your dentrix. We'll do some screen grabs and see what our opportunities are. We're going to punt some cases over to ortho, um, but we're going to start finding some easy opportunities that may be in this line. It may be clear, correct. It may be you want to try indirect bonding. There's a lot of great indirect bonding systems out there. Some are branded, some you can do yourself for really cheap. If you're going to do braces, traditional braces, you got to get the brackets on perfect. If you get the brackets on perfect and you pick a great case, this is a slam dunk. You just put a work your way through the wires um, and you're done. So. 
For sure. There's so many literally turnkey options that you can do for ortho that it won't, you won't stress or sweat at all. But you have to know how to look at the cases. And there's no way you're going to have the experience initially to be able to avoid the ticking time bombs. And there's some ticking time bombs that are hiding in cases. They might look easy, but they're going to implode on you if you pick the wrong one. So that's really where I think I'm a value add. But, you know, if you want a program where you sit down and you're actually like learning the movements and learning to take wires and bend wires and all that, there's plenty of programs out there for you, too. That's not me. Um, I'm all about easy, quick, um, comfortable, safe. But if you want those, I can send you to those, too. And so so uh, at, at your website, straightsmilesolutions.com. So you have videos on you have online CE courses. I haven't yet done that, but I should through you. But um, I correct. I have like a couple hundred YouTube videos just going over it. Some of it's patient focused. You know, um, I have a big um, Facebook site where patients are able to get on with doctors and talk about, you know, their ortho, their ortho questions directly from doctors. Um, the patients love it because there really is nothing else out there where they can honestly ask a question and get feedback. But um, from that, you know, I've created a lot of patient focused videos just to educate patients. And a lot of times I end up playing matchmaker, you know, like I get patients that are like, Hey, I'm really looking for accelerated ortho. I really want Excelidet and I want Invisalign together. Can you find me a doctor in Sacramento who will do this? And I do like, if I know you, I'll go ahead and give you a call. I'll be like, Hey, you know, can I give this patient your address, your, your, your contact information? Cause they want to go to someone like you. And I end up playing matchmaker. It's free, you know, but, um, why not? You and know, what, help, is, what help is your YouTube? There. What is your YouTube channel where you have hundreds of videos? Um, yeah, it's Straight Smile Solutions is the handle. Oh, so okay, I'm, Straight Smile Solutions. Okay, yeah. I was I was doing a um, so it's called um, Straight Smiles Solutions. Um, plural. Just one smile, not multiple smiles. Straight smile. smile. Straight smile. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And so I go to Straight Smile Solutions. I go into YouTube. You want to know the secret of exploding your YouTube video? Okay, so there it is. So yeah, so you, um, there it is. This one's on uh, dental monitoring systems with Straight Smile Solutions. That's the first one that came up. For sure. You know, that, you know what you do great. on Dental Town? Go to Orthodontics. Mm -hmm. And when you make a post, when you go to your YouTube video, if you click share, it has a link. Okay. But the next button okay. over is embed and it has the code. And then on Dental Town, there's a YouTube button on a post. You click that, you drop the YouTube. Now the video is playing there. And then those people jump awesome. right to your YouTube channel and subscribe. So it's kind of like posting on Dental Town as a marketing uh, for your Sweet. YouTube channel. Yeah. And if you've already made yeah. all the, and, and another great thing to do, do an online CE course. And then they'll get to meet you and fall in love with you. Then they'll subscribe to your Facebook group. Sure. What's your Facebook group called? Um, my Facebook, I have a Street Smile Solutions Facebook group. That's for doctors um, who okay. are looking for support. And then we also have one called, I think it's called, um, oh goodness, patient focus, uh, doctor moderated orthodontics group or something like that. I'm kind of maybe butchering that, but it'll probably come up when it comes up. And we have about... We just started a few months ago, but we have a ton of patients on there and it's really active. We have a lot of doctors that are on there posting. Um, it's really exciting to see what's out there and the patients are so happy about it. It's really a revolution. I mean, if you would have told me when I, when I walked out of dental school, you want to know how old I am? We thought we were um, so lucky because they were putting computers in for the next class and we were high-fiving <laughs> each other that we got out of school. And back then they were telling everybody that if you didn't learn how to program in Fortran and Cobalt, that someday you would be, you know, a Neanderthal. And we're like, man, I'm so glad I didn't have to learn Fortran and Cobalt and learn these damn computer stuff. And if you would've told me that someday I'd have a phone in my pocket that had a computer and a compass and a calculator and an email, I mean, it's just, man, Amazing. times are going so fast. And, but one thing about the orthodox, you know, the, full, the five rules of uh, economics on a business plan, are you doing it faster, easier? higher in quality, lower in cost, and making it smaller and more miniature. And and the one thing the orthodontists have not wanted to budge on in the 30 years I've been in, in dentistry is the price. They wanna do more yeah. cases, they wanna market more, they wanna have all the bells and whistles, they wanna to go to oral scanners instead of an alginate, they wanna do every single thing on earth except lower their price. And, and humans, they have to lower their price now. I mean, right. there's just no option not to. Maybe in a few markets you can get away with it. I mean, shoot, I used to charge seven back in, goodness, when was the last 
Invisalign back in the Bay Area, I was charging easily seven grand for an Invisalign case back in the mid 2000s before the tech bust. And I mean, now it's a lot of people, good orthos charging 3,500. Look at Swanky Smiles, look at some of these business models out there. There, There's some really innovative business models that are out there. I'm not involved in them, but I think it's cool. Um, and you know what? Patients are getting some really good care. So how do you how do you think these venture capitalists and companies are squeezing the cost out? I mean, I mean, obviously they're doing the oral scanner. What well, they're making all all twenty four trays at once, so you don't have to come out. If you if you were coaching an orthodontist or a general dentist, how would you squeeze cost out of orthodontics so that you could lower the price sure. to sell more? I'm excited to answer this question. So um, number one, of course, is going to be to use the lowest cost lab solution that's out there that may be 3d printing in your own office it's super easy now to do the 3d printing i think the design's a little more tricky that might take some training but there's definitely some great um options like sure smile or full contour where you can go in and have somebody do the design for you um for i think about 99 to 149 dollars well they'll just do it and you can export these stl files and go ahead and spit them out either in your own lab, you know, and then just all you got to do is have an assistant just thermal form, you know, vacuum form and trim. That's pretty easy. You can have a high school student do that. Bag them. Um, patients really don't care if it's branded. Mo the majority of patients couldn't care less, um, honestly, if it's a branded aligner system or not. They just want to have something that's going to work. And there's a lot of patients that are out there where if you said, hey, look, I can give you this branded aligner system or save $500 and you can have you know, this white label aligner system generic, they're like, heck yeah, I'm using generic toilet paper anyway. So what's the difference if it works the same for my case, I'm up for that. You know, I don't want to pay for all this marketing. So yeah, um, lab solution would be number one. Number two is going to be reducing well, 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 those. Let's, let's say at lab solution, you, you, sure. the, 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 you gave, you recommended sure smile. That's a sure smile 360 owned what? by dense flight. Yeah. And that's, that's, one, that's, sure. that, that's uh, uh, all the treatment planning software, appliance fabrication, support service you need to give each patient the smile they want. You like that one? I like it. It's, I like it because it's um, web-based. I mean, I think it's great. You can either do it yourself or I believe you can pay them a fee to have you do it. Um, Full Contour is another one. Um, they're based in Phoenix, actually near you. It's another really? one. Full Contour. Uh, mm -hmm. Full Contour Lab. Um, mm -hmm design only so they don't actually like make anything they just do the design and then they'll export it to any lab of your choice and if you don't or your own lab within your own office so uh so 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 continue about squeezing costs out so you said uh sure. you, you know you started earlier saying you know invisalign i mean that's a a lab bill of 1825 plus retention 1825 plus retention yeah unless you get volume discount now this line sometimes thinks i pick on them i don't i do but only because you know you can you can be very successful having an Invisalign only practice if you can get that 38% lab discount then I think that's fantastic if you can go diamond plus I'm all for it and I help a lot of practices do that so that's cool if that's what you want to do then do it but if you want to start save even more and maybe have a good better best option then that could be part of your model and then the rest could be exporting to some local labs using something like sure smile or full contour um, or Blue Sky Bio, any of those things that are out there, there's tons of options. But beyond that, the other thing you have to do is you have to save your chair time. Your chair time has a value. Your own chair time as a doctor has a value. Your chair time for your staff has a value. There's no reason these patients should be coming in every four to six weeks for an aligner or even, even a braces visit. There's no reason for this. You can trim this and be more efficient with a lot of the options that are out there, like for example, dental monitoring system. So it's great. My doctor saved so much money paying that $9 a month, but yet saving say 40, 50% on overhead. It's a no brainer for me. And what was that website? Um, that would be dental monitoring system, DM. It's a, a Paris based company. And you, you recommend them? 100%. My friend, I'm going to go to their, um, they have a summit in March in Las Vegas. So if anyone's coming, I'm going because I want to learn and I hear they're releasing some new products, but my doctors that use this, they never go back because they're like, okay, get over the $9 per month and yes, the base level, but per patient, if you can eliminate, I mean, look what the, what the direct -to consumer aligner companies are doing. They're finding good patients and they're eliminating as much as possible of those in office visits. You can do the same thing, you know? You can monitor your patient, aligner visits or aligner cases, or even indirect bonding cases, it doesn't matter what you're using, 
but for the most part, functional appliances even, airway appliances. There's no reason when they come in, if, the, if you picked your case right and you did your treatment plan right, and the patient's a good patient, I realize there's a lot of variables in there, but if everything's going well, there's no reason these patients often need to come in as frequently as you have them come in. That's like one of the biggest, I guess, barriers to orthodontics. What patients hate about the traditional orthodontic experience is having to come in for no reason, you know? Right. Um, so what, what do you think is the advantage of this dental monitoring? What are, what are they actually doing? They're monitoring the patient how? Digitally? Teledentistry? Yeah. You call this They're teledentistry? I guess I would. They're collecting AI. So they have um, a huge AI already established from all the cases they've done, not only for braces, functional appliances, and aligners. Um, as far as I know, they don't work with the direct-to-consumer aligner companies. They're working directly with dentists, as far as I know. So there's no reason to not like them. You know, Some people, I think they automatically assume that they're direct-to-consumer, and they're not. So they're coming into your office. They're helping you set this up so that your patients can check in anywhere. And they put these little retractors on that um, have some special position points. So that way they can collect the data and the AI. And they'll actually send you an alert if an aligner isn't tracking. Um, or if you have braces, it'll send you an alert that a bracket is broken or that a gum is puffy. The computer can read these things and send the doctor an alert. The doctor logs into a HIPAA compliant dashboard and they can go ahead and check into the case and communicate with the patient. You can even set up for aligners, say Invisalign, correct, your own brand aligners. You can even set up the parameters so that the patient doesn't even advance to the next aligner until you check and make sure it's tracking and you're happy with the with the result and the outcome so far. And if you do that, your case will never go off track. Off track. If you do that, there's no reason you should even be doing revisions or refinements. Everything should just go straight through and then you'll be done. Wow, that is, uh, that is it's just amazing how fast this is all going. It I is. mean, it's just uh, uh, dental monitoring, um, wow. So, so have you gotten to the headquarters in Paris? No, I wish. I'll uh, get where, Felipe to take me. So bio <laughs> I haven't been to Paris in 20 years, but I mean, I'm hoping for sure. So BioLate, our, our three shape is in Copenhagen, Denmark. And um, right. what were the other ones we were talking about? Um, what's the one in Helsinki, Finland um, that owns E4D? Oh, E4D, yeah. Who mm -hmm. owns E4D? Uh, Plan Mecca. Um, Plan Mecca, yeah. But I, I have my theory about uh, Scandinavia. When you go there... Um, you go to Denmark, uh, Copenhagen, and see three shape. You go to Helsinki, Finland, see Plan Mega. They have like four hours of sunlight a day, and it's like that's 20... only in the winter. I I, I know, but it, the, the it, it's a... the other way around. Yeah, it, but it's a long winter, and those guys will tell you it's so cold and dark and miserable that the way to get through it is just love your work and work ten hours a day, six days a week. And they go, man, I come in in the winter and I do six, 10 hour days a week. I'm talking about dentists and companies. Wow. And then That's when the crazy. sun comes up and when everybody wants to visit Denmark and there's nobody mm -hmm. there, you can't get a restaurant or a hotel because everybody totally went true. to the Mediterranean and is out yeah. sunbathing for two months. So it's a really hard, if you want to see it working in action, you got to see it at its worst. And then if you want to see it at its best, all the people are gone. Uh, but I, I, I love this place. But but Paris, France, they have some amazing dental companies. Amazing. And so does Germany. Yeah, for sure. I actually used to live in Germany for a year and a half. So um, I love it. Was that military? No, no, no. Um, my grandfather's Austrian. So um, it was my major, actually, in, in uh, undergrad was German. I just think I just wanted to party. So um, <laughs> it was a great year and a half. And then I went to dental school after that and buckled down. Well, my, my favorite dental convention period is always the IDF meeting in Cologne. Yes. They only have it every other year. It's the only dental meeting you ever go to in the world that has 100,000 dentists there from every corner. Every time you're talking to some dentist, you don't know if they're going to say they're from Cambodia or Bolivia or, I mean, just amazing. the whole world descends on there. And uh, so, um, my gosh, this is amazing. I really wish you would do an online C course. Or some 100%. articles on it. It's just too yeah. much information to go from. I'm 25. I got four hundred thousand dollars in debt. I got a, a dental degree, and where do I go from here? Uh, now, yeah, are you sure. now? Are you? What percent do you think the um, the market is right now in America of, of clear aligners versus brackets? I mean, you keep here. I mean, are brackets dying? Um, in some parts of the country, I mean, I'm like. I, I think I'd reference my daughter who's wearing clear liners and she's in fourth grade, but 
her entire class. I came in, I'm looking around, and I see I can see clear clear aligners across the room. I can tell if it's Invisalign, Clear Correct, your own brand. I can just tell by the shape, the trim. And every single kid in that class has clear aligners. There's no braces anywhere to be found. So um, I even asked her, I said, would you want braces? Oh, no way. I'd never wear braces. So, you know, I think it's bi-coastal for the most part. You know, San Diego, San Francisco, New York, a lot of the kids are getting um, clear options. And there's so many options out there. You know, you can, com you can combine functional appliances with clear aligners and start these cases young and correct the bite and then just use the clear aligners just to fine tune it. You know, there's just no reason that you have to be doing these, you know, headgear and these kind of fixed piston herps or anything like this is torture devices. It really is. So, you know, you got to think outside the box and listen to what the kids want. And kids are on YouTube now. They're on Instagram. They're on Snapchat. They know what their friends are having and they want what their friends have. So might as well figure out a way to offer it. So not that you're giving investing advice, but which if you had to, I mean, Smalls Drug Club's talking about doing an IPO. Invisalign's publicly traded. The the CEO that's been on um, um, Kramer and and you see him on uh, different talk shows. Do you which one, which one of these companies do you think well the next ten years will really dominate and really grow and dominate their marketplaces? Yikes! I don't. I don't, I'm. I'm a little nervous about that question because I do have some non-disclosure agreements and uh, than, than NDAs and, and uh, stuff like that with some people. So um, in that land, but um, I don't want to get anyone after me. But um, listen, anything clear, I think, is great. That's what I've got to say. So I would definitely look more towards clear and less towards brackets and wire. So that would be my suggestion. So if she was 25 and she just graduated, would you even? even recommend that she goes through training to learn how to place bands and spacers and brackets or would you say not no? bands and spacers no i think everyone should learn the basics of um indirect bonding because first of all if you get in a pickle with a case you could always throw some brackets and wires on and if you understand how teeth move with brackets and wires 100 percent you can understand how the teeth move with aligners it's just way easier so I do. So no like more bands. So, so you're saying. No, 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 never. Uh -uh, bands uh -uh. are dead. That's just like, that's just like bacteremia, septicemia, no way. Mm -mm. Wow. And by the way, I got to hammer down. You, you, uh, you said getting a pickle. Now I'm from Kansas. I only heard that in Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri. I've never heard that <laughs> outside of Missouri. Remember we talked about that. So I've lived in a lot of places. So well, you picked um, up, you I picked, picked up, up the lingo everywhere. Yeah, that yeah. getting a pickle came from your Missouri days. For sure. I, I, I don't yeah, think my I, family's I, from the deep south, so um, yeah, <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of those in there somewhere. Well, you know, it's but, imagine yeah. when I got out of school, the big hot thing was, um, um, you know, it was going from amalgam and gold fillings to composite, and the operative department just thought the, the composites were junk and hated them, and um, the, <laughs> the new cosmetic was a PFM. And now I'm seeing the extinction <laughs> of the PFM. I'm seeing extinction of the amalgam in the 20 developed nations. And now you're saying that banded molars on ortho is just done. No way. Mm -mm, done. Wow. No reason. So, hey, I've got a, a DL on number 13 in me. My only fail. My husband did it. It was his first composite he did in dental school. I think it was the second year. And it's it's well over 20 years. He did an awesome job. He's a great dentist. But... um. There's nothing wrong with this. Progress when done right is great. So did you guys meet in dental school? We did, yeah. His last name is Wong. My last name is Wilson. It was me and all the Wang Wong's Yangs um, sitting. You know, UCSF is notorious for having a very um, Pacific-based um, demographic. So um, yeah, it was pretty much me. So you were Wilson classmates. and your so. hubby was Wong. Yes, correct. Well, hey, um, and all the well, you know, I, I want to switch gears completely because that's actually the most important thing. I, I've read a lot of interesting research that um, highly educated people in the same fields have the lowest divorce rate. Like if you're a lawyer marrying a lawyer or a dentist marrying a dentist. Really? It, it, it's like, I, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. There's this one study. Um, I, I posted it on downtown. I got this uh, thread called uh, Brain Food, but it was showing that. Uh, when dentists and lawyers and physicians marry each other, the the lowest divorce rates like thirteen percent. And basically, what uh, they were saying, Great. I did a couple of podcasts on it because that was marriage counselors, and they were saying, "Well, you, you got so much in common. I mean, you're both dentists. 
I mean, I mean, instead of, you know, you got kids in common, you, yeah, but, but it's it just, it's a serious deal. But any advice you would give to, uh, to lovebirds listening to this in dental school? That's and, uh, an awesome question. I think this is my favorite question of the day. Well, first of all, my husband's going to flip out. He was the one texting me if he even knows I'm talking to you because he's such a fan. So he's not going to believe it. We're going to have to publish it and let him see it. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, you know, you develop so much trust with what you go through in dental school. I mean, there's a lot that you go through and you develop so much trust and such a deep connection with that group of people. So if you can get through dental school, you can get through anything in life. So um, we're very blessed. We have two great kids. Um, you know, I don't think either of them want to be dentists, they, but, um, you know, it's, it's really, really just a blessing and it's fun. Well, you say they don't want to be dentists. Um, they say that in 20 years, one third of the jobs in America will be in industries that have not been invented yet. So, I mean, right. it's just so they fast. They love rolling. social media. But you know yeah, what's true? Yeah, yeah. You, going through four-year school really is bonding. Because look, look at war buddies. All my buddies who did a year in Vietnam with some other guy, the guy might be living in a whole other state on the other side. But when they meet back up, they're like love brothers you know, just because yeah. they went through hell together for a year. Yeah. So the rest of their for life, sure. they're, 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 they're buddies. No questions yeah. asked. No, our class is like that too. And I think that we, so much of our class, we only had 72 people, like it coupled up like crazy. It's really great when we have our reunions. It's really fun yeah, to see everyone. That, that, that is great. So do you have any rules? Like, do you not, uh, do you not talk dentistry uh, when you get home or is dentistry an open subject? Um, I just told him, <laughs> don't talk dentistry right now because I'm talking to Howard. And he was like, what? You're talking to Howard. But yeah, um, we try not to text each other during the day um, about dentistry, but that's pretty much the, the only rule. So. But so, you know, inadvertently, he's sending me pictures of this great implanty place. He loves implants, so um, you know, it's really fun to see what he does and to encourage him. So, um, so for, uh, for the, um, but back to the uh, the fastest, easiest, cheapest way to learn ortho. Um, is there sure. um, any, any? Who do you recommend there? Well, that would be me, Howard. But no, so, kidding. so you, so you would recommend that they go to your site, and we'll we'll tell them how that works. So they go to sure. straightsmilesolutions.com, dot com, and sure. she's twenty five. She doesn't know ortho. Tell me how it works. What does it cost? How, how does this? How does this work? Sure. So my goal is to honestly be the lowest price option out there because I want that twenty five year old not to be stressing out. You know about having a few cases and not having it break the bank. A lot of the other systems that are out there, they're gonna charge you per case, whereas I have as low as a fee of $499 a month for unlimited cases, one doctor, one office. And I don't care if they're Invisalign, Clear Correct, your own brand aligners, uh, six months, smiles, you name it. Um, any brand out there of any kind of ortho, I'll support you with. I don't care if they're new, in, you know, in progress, you're stuck on them, pickle cases, will help you through every single case. So I have a lot of doctors that are doing a great job. You know, like they've gone from doing two cases a month to doing 30 cases a month. Oh my God. Um, all just weird. having having someone there all the time to help them out, you know, and they never get stuck. That's my goal. But yeah, I offer every doctor really, and then this is a huge offer, a huge give, but any doctor can schedule an appointment with me. There's no cost just to chat. Um, and we'll just talk about how their cases are going, what their questions are about the different lab options out there, how we can possibly get them started. Um, and you know, and that may, I may not be the solution. I may be, I may send you to, you know, progressive orthodontics and there's so many different options that are out there that maybe are better for you. And if that's not me, I'm totally fine with that. I'll send you where you want to go. Well, um, um, so, so they're going to, um, pay four ninety nine a month. They're going to get that's, it. That's the, on the low end, but yeah. Low, yeah. yeah that, that's the intro <laughs> starter deal. She doesn't know ortho. Mm -hmm. And um, she's going to get an open source scanner, three shape, mm -hmm. right? For sure. And then any other software um, that she would need on her computer? You don't have to have the scanner to get started. You can do it with impressions. So there's no reason you need to invest in anything. All you need to do is have basically a phone or a computer and we'll find a way to to start finding HIPAA compliant ways to review your cases and supporting your cases. So um, yeah, that's all you need. And and what what is, and who is the average person calling you? Are they young, old, are they rural, urban? Um, who, who I have everything. I got some guy in Greece talking to me tomorrow. I've had people in Hong Kong, Australia, all over the US, rural, urban, DSOs, you know, high-end practices, you name it. I mean, people are afraid to admit that they that they need help, but 
hey, I went to school for three extra years and I've done thousands of cases, of course I can help you. And you know what, if I decided to go back and be a general dentist, I would need help with my endo, I would need help with my OS, I'd need help with my perio, I mean, I'm gonna need help too. So, you know, we want you to have a really private way that you can get the help that you need, um, you know, and get it as fast as you can, sometimes, you know, immediately when the patient's in the chair. You know, the, um the uh, the one thing I think all the governments haven't figured out yet is that the internet killed nationalism. I mean, um, they, they, yeah. I mean, I've lectured in so many countries where you can tell that these people in Cambodia or Indonesia or Thailand or in South Africa have more friends and family and connection in Tanzania than they do in their own. You know, it's just it's just that they're almost lining up more as dent two million dentists around the world. And they're, they're almost referring more to, I'm a dentist and I have my board certification in the, in the implantology as opposed to talking about that they're Cambodian. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Really, yeah we're all connected. Yeah, it's and, such a great um, connection. I meet so many great doctors all over the world um, and I just love it. And anytime I go to a, a meeting, hey, if anyone's gonna be at Chicago Midwinter, I'll be there, I don't have a booth. I'm just gonna be kind of walking around, but contact me, email me, we'll meet up, we'll have coffee, we'll talk. She'll I'm be sure. she'll be the Hawaiian dressed in shorts, frozen to death out oh, in front of the hotel. Dude, of the I don't hotel. even have a jacket. <laughs> Howard, I don't even have a jacket. I lost it somewhere after Connecticut. I don't know where it is. I'm refusing to buy one. So, um, yeah. It's you'll, funny. Every, you'll see me. <laughs> every jacket and coat I own is because I left Phoenix and it was in the winter and it was 80 degrees and I forgot and I landed someplace and it's 30 degrees and it's snowing and I'm at the yeah. airport trying to buy the, the thickest jacket they have. But one thing I will tell you about around the world is that there's a lot of crazy insurance schemes. In America, they're more nonprofit like Delta or they might be for profit, you know, um, but in a lot of governments like Japan, France, London, they have the government dental system and it's so regulated and the price are so, like in Japan, in Japan, Tokyo and London, the government only gives you $100 for a molar root canal and you're not allowed to charge wow. more. So then you go to those states, well, what do all the dentists do? Well, I, they, to do a root canal like an American would do would cost them six, seven, eight hundred dollars So they, mm -hmm. but implants and ortho aren't covered. So they'll just extract the tooth and place yeah. an implant where they can charge 1500 for the implant. So when I see that around the world, I get very nervous about socialized medicine because I only know dentistry really, really well. I don't know cardiovascular surgery or oncology or any of that stuff, but where the government has really tried to help the people with socialized dentistry, it's a disaster. I mean, it is just yeah. horrible. And, and then when I go to any of those countries, the dentist will tell me, well, I can't make a living on cleanings, exams, and fillings because the government only lets me charge $12 for a filling and $4, blah, blah. But if I just do one Invisalign case a week, or the other half of the dentists are into implants. They're either one or the other, into the white, soft, yeah. bleaching, bonding, veneers, clear liners, or they're into blood and guts, implants, root canals, extractions, and dentures. And they'll say, if I just place one implant a week for my regular yeah. fee, I mean, I'm in Cambodia, that, that's $1,000 a week, 50 weeks a year. I'm a very successful dentist. If I can just take for this sure. this, medi this Medicaid socialized insurance mess where somebody has controlled the price and then I get to use that base to discover and find and present an ortho case and, and pretty much everywhere I go. And that's where I always come with that metric where I don't really see anybody being successful as far as doing a treatment that's good and profitable unless they're doing at least one a week. I mean, I, yeah, I, you the first couple are going to be, they're going to be challenging. You're going to, there's a big learning curve. So you can't give up. And so many people start ortho and then they give up. So I want you guys to go back, find those cases and we'll learn from them and then we'll go find more, you know? Yeah. And, and the other thing that I noticed that as you get from the richer countries to the more underdeveloped countries, the women spend two to three or four times as much on personal beauty, makeup, do. Uh, eyeliner. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw, I was in this one, I was in Shenzhen in China and um, uh -huh. this guy was showing me that the women in Shenzhen spend 40% of their income on what we would call health and beauty, you know, hair, makeup. Dude, I don't doubt that. And, and so, I've got a sister-in-law who lives in um, Shanghai and uh, yeah, she's like amazing. The amount of stuff she spends, you know, of 
how she looks, but that's just how it is. Yeah, so I, I see I see the next 20 years, whether they're, you know, Strawman is, is publicly traded. They're the number one implant. They sell the most implants. Invisalign, mm -hmm. Smalls Drug Club. I, I think they have so much upward market. And when I was um, mm -hmm. interviewing the CEO of Strawman, he was telling me that, that you know, 20 countries place more implants per thousand people than America. And he was just saying, yeah. and Wall Street's looking at his stock saying, gosh, if the United States would just place the same number of implants per person as they yeah. do in Korea or G or Germany. So I, I, I think it's going to start rapidly being socially unacceptable to be a girl walking around with a Gucci purse, missing a, a tooth, missing a, a tooth. molar yeah. and, and whiter, mm -hmm. brighter, straighter, sexier teeth is going to just become every, all seven and a half billion humans are going to want it. It is. It is. It's totally. Yeah. Sure. Now, are you seeing, um, what are other signs of success people doing? The, the, I want you to address this. This is a concern of mine. You go back to 1900, there were no specialties and healthcare was mm -hmm. not very good. And it was only 1% of the economy. A hundred years later, 2000, it was 14% of the GDP. And the MDs had 58 specialties. We had nine. And so when I see mm -hmm. a dentist say, well, I want to learn how to do clear aligners, place implants, sinus lifts, bone grafts, molar root canal, pediatric dentistry, silver diamine, fluoride. And I start looking at this saying, well, historically, that's not the way the trend has been going. The trend has been going that as this tree breaks out, you need to focus on one tree. Do you think someone who would be a candidate to add ortho? Is it someone who doesn't add implants or are you seeing clients oh, that are being all. the super dentists that do it all? What, what, what's the Listen, business model? Ortho goes hand in hand with implants 100%. Because if you're going to drop an implant or think about dropping an implant, you better have those roots parallel, you know? And if even if you're going to do a bridge, you want to have the, you know, the draw really, really good. So any type of crown and bridge you're doing or implants um, and even sleep, you know, you want the arches to be widened. I think ortho goes together with any high productive procedure. Wow. Um, and, uh, and then talk a little bit more if someone's listening to this and they're a pediatric dentist as opposed to an orthodontist mm -hmm. like you. Um, what, 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 is, what is the pediatric dentist angle from what you've learned over the years? For sure. I mean, I think originally pediatric dentists were focused on just kind of drill and fill, you know, baby root canals, uh, preventive. But now most pediatric dentists are easily doing phase one treatment, you know. Some of their phase one's a little rudimentary, it's just expansion, but now they're really looking into doing growth and development and there's a lot of really cool nighttime only appliances out there. Uh, a lot of new appliances on the market. I'm still um, learning about some of them out there. A lot of expensive appliances on the market out there that people are using, um, but for sure, I mean, it is totally possible to do some types of uh, intervention appliances just at night uh, when the kid is young and have this child actually never even need braces or aligners. So it's pretty amazing how these things work out there. And do you, and, and talk a little bit about teledentistry. I mean, this is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Where, where, do, where do you see teledentistry headed? Teledentistry is gonna, it's, it's here to stay. So, and I mean, it's no different than any other telemedicine. I mean, nowadays I can get on and talk to my, to my pediatrician online and get a prescription. I don't even have to go in, you know, using some of their portals that they're using. They don't want you to have to come in and use up their, their chair time and their office time. So for basic check-ins and easy procedures, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to use teledentistry to eliminate chair time. And hey, that eliminates overhead. You don't need to run so many chairs. You maybe don't even need such a huge office, you know, with, and that's, that's for, New doctors who are graduating, I think everyone's like, oh, I got to get this big office. No, you really don't. And I think a lot of times if you're creative and you're using teledentistry, it's very possible to share an office with somebody else um, or go in on off hours and use their office. So a lot of different ways to eliminate, you know, if you already have $400,000 in debt and you're a new grad, don't buy the, you know, don't buy the hype. You don't have to buy a huge office. Talk to me first. I can give you ideas on maybe how you can find ways to be productive without huge overhead. Do they need a CBCT? Is CBT is CBCT Good becoming question. the standard of care in orthodontics? Um, yes and no. For some type of cases, yes. I mean, for sure, for impacted canine cases, for surgical cases, for cases that might involve TADS, but most of those are, those are ones that are going to the orthodontist. So for ones that general dentists are doing, um, and pediatric dentists are doing, I don't think so. 
So, so you know, unless it's an airway case, if it's an airway case, then maybe if you're, if you're, if you're billing medical insurance, then probably. Wow. And, um, you're, um, um, do what, what do you think is harder, uh, ortho or swimming? <laughs> how did, wait, how did you bring up swimming? Or you knew that I was involved well, in USA swimming? Yeah, because, um, when I, uh, <laughs> when I turned 50, my new year's resolution, I did, I did Ironman every year, three years in a row. And it was bike, swim, run. And they told you from day one, they said, look, look, running. I mean, you put one foot in front of the other. It's not a lot of technique. Bicycling. I mean, come on, you put your feet in the pedals, you go around. But they, but it was Michael DeTola, um, who's been mm-hmm. on the show. And he told me, he said, dude, never swim without an instructor because it's, it's a hard, it's like, it's like gymnastics or uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's so skill. And what I was amazing is, uh, I actually didn't like swimming the most because when you're running, you can be thinking about anything. When you're biking, you can be talking to the guy next yeah. to you. But God, when you're swimming, it's like, you got to remember like 25 things at all the time. And and the resistance oh, yeah. of the I'm an water. I'm official for USA Swimming, so um, I just got my national national level. So I go in and I um, officiate meets, stroke and turn. So yeah, swimming so that, is challenging. I so love that's it, so though. that's my question. What do, what do you think is harder yeah. to intellectually understand, orthodontics or swimming? Swimming for yeah. me, I'm always learning. I actually have my book here. I'm always reading the rules. Um, it's very challenging. I love it, you know, but. If you can do swimming, you can do anything for sure. And my kids are, are big swimmers, so um, it's absolutely amazing. It's a great community as well. Yeah, it, it is. It's a really great community, and uh, I um, there's and there's a lot of dentists in the in the pool in the mornings uh, swimming Ton. laps. Uh, ton, 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 yeah. tons of dentists. <laughs> um, my gosh, so I can't believe I already had you on for an hour. Um, is there anything I didn't talk about that you wish I would have talked about? Not really. I think you touched on just about everything. I just really want to encourage anyone if they don't worry about finances, please just call me if you're if you're stuck, you have questions. Um, you can message me, find me on Facebook, on LinkedIn for sure. I'm super active. I want you to feel comfortable just asking questions and getting those questions answered. No cost, no charge. Just ask, you know, and I definitely would love to. Um, write some articles for you and do a CE on Donald Town. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, it's 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 great marketing because the one thing we have is distribution. I mean, you know, we, we mail our magazine sure. to 125,000, but then it digitally goes out. It's emailed all over the world. Mm-hmm. And like I say on your YouTube channel, I um your YouTube the best way to explode your YouTube uh, channel mm-hmm. is start posting the videos in Dental Town, and then it's your actual YouTube. So when they click to it, they go to YouTube. And, uh, and then if they like what they see, they subscribe. And my job is to try to introduce mega stars like you to my homies Aww. who are, no, you are, you, you're at, you absolutely are. I mean, what you've done, I mean, God, your resume. I mean, 99% of all the kids uh, listening to this right now are never gonna have your resume. Um, and it's just amazing. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, but you gotta explain, Thanks, are, those, are those all surfboards behind you? These are surfboards, you know, in Hawaii, we have very small houses, so we're right near the beach. These are my husband's and my kids. I'm not a great surfer, but yeah, this is my office slash surf room. So, and give us an update on the green screen and give us an update on the volcano. It's been erupting. It's been oozing for what? Two or three months. Oh, it's pretty much dead now. It's, it's went kind of dormant so we can go back, um, and visit. It's a really cool place to visit. If you've never been to Hilo side, um, you should definitely come check out that volcano. Very yeah, I've, I've been to Hawaii so many times, so many islands. Um, Maui is, I mean, not to be rude, Maui's my favorite. Hawaii's my second favorite. The reason I'm not a big fan of Honolulu is because it's kind of really close to San Francisco or San Diego. Whereas Maui it's, and the Big Island yeah. is something you never well, saw like in Kauai. Kansas. So Kauai for me is my favorite. Kauai? So Kauai, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you when you're in Kauai or you're in Maui or you're on uh, the big guy in Hawaii, you are not in Kansas anymore. I mean, it is so no. damn cool. But I imagine if you want to do all the shopping and eating and restaurants and all that, the Oahu's where you want to be. How did the ADA meeting? Was that a big success going there? Um, actually, I think it wasn't. Not for ADA. They didn't do anything wrong. But we had that big strike going on with um, Marriott SPG, so um, it really kind of disrupted a lot of people's vacation. I felt terrible you know, for the visitors, because it's really not who we are, but um, that's just how it was. Well, so I always, I wonder, I always wonder about yeah. the booth people, because if you go to like Chicago midwinter and all the dentists know mm-hmm. that it's minus 12 outside, they all right. stay in the convention and they all go around the booths. 
But if you say it's 70 degrees outside and you should be golfing, yeah. then everybody leaves the lecture hall and just runs for their car. So I always want Oh, it's to... done. Everything's done by two, three. So yeah, it's a really short exhibit time. Yeah. And, um, and then also I just got to get one point of view. There's two, when people go whale watching in Hawaii, the winter whales are twice as big as the, uh, I mean, I mean the, the whales you see at Christmas and holidays, those are just little sperm whales, right? The big blue uh, whales. We have come. the humpback whales now. Yeah, they're here. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the big blue whales come in the summer. Do they? Right? I don't know. I only know about the humpback whales. Those come now. Yeah. But um, sperm whales and humpback whales. And then, yeah, I think there are harder to see those. But yeah, if you've never been whale watching, you should definitely come check it out. It's amazing. Yeah. And I, uh, my gosh, I love Hawaii. Um, is it that much more expensive to live there? You know, a lot of people say yes. it's, it's expensive. <laughs> is, is it really expensive? I travel all the time. I, I travel just to go shopping for my kids for back to school clothes. I mean, one trip, I go to Trader Joe's, buy clothes for them. It's much more expensive. We buy everything from Amazon, but yeah. For sure. I mean, you live very simply here. And last question, and I'll let you go because you're on double overtime. Um, do demographics matter? If, if someone, if some little girl's listening to you right now and she's thinking, you know, I, I'm at AT still. I'm in Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix dumps out a couple hundred matter. dentists <laughs> every. Does, does that matter? Do demographics matter? Or would you just talk about demographics? Can you be successful? It doesn't in matter at all. Don't judge a book by its cover. I've helped doctors go into Medicaid practices before and get successful because, you know, don't judge a book just because they don't maybe have insurance for ortho doesn't mean they're, if you can come up with great financing, that they're not going to find a way to be able to make it happen. So give, I always recommend giving every single patient all their options. Don't just think they want the Kia treatment plan. They, everyone should get the Porsche treatment plan. And then you can have good, better, best. But um, that frustrates me when people just assume that people don't have the finances for things because you'd be surprised at what people want, what they can make happen when they want something. I know. So don't not diagnose the pocketbook. That's excellent advice. I mean, these people find a way to buy an F-150 pickup truck and they're making payments yep. for, for five, six years. They say, well, my insurance doesn't cover it. And they're holding a thousand dollar iPhone in their hand. And, well, and, sure. and the reason they're not yeah. accepting it is because you didn't go for it. You didn't present it. You didn't, you didn't make didn't them explain it. the need. Yeah. yeah. I mean, explain the need. So, um, and you know, everyone should have the best. And if they can't, then at least you can always document that you gave them the best options and then you can come up with something in the middle that will work for their budget. But yeah, for so sure. So you're an orthodontist. You know, I own two magazines and websites. Would you be writing mm -hmm. as an orthodontist for ortho town for the orthodontist and then something separate? for the general dentist in dental town? I don't know. I don't know. Most of the orthodontists don't care for me. So I'm pretty much ostracized from that group. So well, that's um, why they just make assumptions. So no, I think I'd write for dental town. But if you want to, but it's my job. I mean, that's why I'm dentistry. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't do this podcast. So to make a friend, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to help yeah. you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, I mean, two plus two equals four. I'm sorry that you want it to be three or five or seven. Yeah. I, I don't talk woulda, shoulda, coulda. This, this, this is what it is. And, you know, economics doesn't care if you believe in it or not. I mean, you know, economics is going to work and go forward uh, long after you're gone. But, hey, thank you so much, Amanda, for coming thank on the show. You. It was just an honor to podcast you. It was so awesome here. to finally meet you. Yay. All, All right. right. Aloha.